Okay, well, hey, hi, everybody. We're doing a little bit of a video here for uh, introduction to uh, procedural criminal law. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed your courses so far, and we're getting further along into uh, some more complex, you know, subject matter. So, uh, what we're looking at here is a U.S. Uh, criminal procedure and uh, some basic kind of things that I'm sure that many of you have heard before somewhere, at least if you've had me in class before. Uh, the big, in, uh, you know, important thing here is that cr criminal procedure um, can be broken down into at least five different uh, basic uh, parts. One of it has to do with public places, which if we think in the context of uh, travel, roadways, public streets, um, stores, uh, shopping malls, uh, you know, the gas station, different places like that. So anywhere where you might find that the public, you know, congregate, there are going to be certain crimes and certain procedures that are going to pertain to those places. Um, there are other places like uh, police stations, uh, where people are brought for interrogation and there's going to be certain procedures that come about there. Uh, of course there's the prosecutor's office uh, and then there are the courts, both the trial and the appellate courts. And of course another thing that I think will be big in our discussion at some point, it's not mentioned necessarily by the author, is uh, private places like your home uh, and you know uh, what are your rights there in terms of uh, your home? Your home, uh, do you have the right in your home, for example, uh, to be totally safe in your home from even uh, government intrusion, uh, either by wiretapping or the police knocking your door down or, or any of those type things? So we're going to be looking at at least five different areas uh, and what the certain procedures are that are going to pertain to those areas. One of the things we need to understand is that we have always the job of balancing. It's a balancing act at all times. It involves balancing values in uh, criminal procedure. These could be uh, safety, freedom, as a, as a balance that I've put in some of my other video lectures, that there is a need to balance uh, safety versus freedom. Another way of putting that is community security versus individual autonomy. Uh, another thing is, is ends versus means. Let us take a graphic uh, poor uh, example in our uh, recent history. Uh, Nixon wanted to find out if his opponent had certain information about him and he had a certain kind of an imperial or monarchical view of himself as that he had the right to this information. So what was the means that he used? Well he used illegal means to obtain what he thought was important information that he needed. So uh, you know, uh, should police be like Nixon? Should they be allowed to violate the law for example for some greater good like safety? Uh, should they be able to violate an innocent person's rights uh, just in order to maintain safety. So these are the kind of things that we're going to be struggling with as we go uh, through this class. And so ends is the search for the actual truth and means is the issue of the rights of the people. Can we violate those rights in order to get to the facts that we need, the evidence that we need? Uh, and that, that's a constant question. Um, in the 60s, for example, it was clearly answered, no, you cannot violate citizens' rights, uh, even though it's for a good purpose to get evidence that you need to prove your case. In the more recent past, there's been a more relaxed, kind of a good faith argument. Well, he's doing this for a good reason, so the ends justify the means. So the need for evidence justifies violating people's rights. Well, I'm one of those people that doesn't believe that. I'll just put that out front. Uh, and I know there's a lot of other people like that. And it's funny because people with these views can come from both sides of the aisle. That is to say, liberals 
and conservatives can hold to that view. So um, all these things are important to consider uh, and so we just have to decide uh, you know how much safety can we afford in exchange for the loss of our freedom. This is especially true right now when we look at this whole terrorism situation, domestic terrorism, foreign terrorism, you know that people can come in you know should the uh, police, the Homeland Security be able to listen in on our phone conversations. This is a big deal right now. Should they be able to have access to all of our phone records? You know, and so these are the kind of things that uh, we'll be talking about and, and we'll be wrestling with in this class. Um, so basically this is, the, historically this goes back a long way. For a long time in this country no one really I think made the clear connection between the Bill of Rights and our Constitution uh, and the rights of the people and the right to be secure against uh, search and seizure by, by the police. I think when this started to be a major issue was around 1959-1960. Uh, it's called the Earl Warren Years in the Supreme Court, also known as the Due Process Revolution. And one of the things I've asked you to do early in this course is take a look at this uh, case, Map versus Ohio, because I think this kind of sets the historical um, beginnings of this whole process, what we call the Due Process Revolution, uh, and so I think it's a, probably an appropriate place to start. Now we'll probably go back further than that at some point because there's a couple other cases like U.S. versus Weeks and uh, some other cases like that that even precede MAP and they are clear back in like the 1920s uh, and so these are important uh, things that we'll be looking at. Well I want you to understand that you can always contact me if you have questions or problems uh, and I will um, be there for you. My uh, private email is robdaywalt at me.com that's Rob, R-O-B, Daywalt, D-A-W-A-L-T, at me.com. Feel free to contact me. Uh, sometimes we'll have the opportunity to use a whiteboard to try to explain this a little better. We'll also probably be including some PowerPoints, and we'll try to um, consider all these topics together as we go along. Look for these videos on a regular basis, uh, and... Um, I'll try to explain these different parts, these different chapters, and specific items within the chapters as we go along. I hope this course is enjoyable for you. I hope it's a really good learning experience. And, you know, I always want you to understand that I'm just uh, as far away as an email or a phone call. So feel free to contact me. My phone number's in the syllabus. Uh, I've got a couple different emails you can contact me. So uh, you can message me through the course. Uh, just, just stay in touch and let me know if you have any questions or problems. Thanks for watching.